Hi there, Allison here with another Cap Franc du Jour. Today we're in the Finger Lakes of New York State and we're looking at the Forge Cellars 2019 Willow Vineyard Cabernet Franc. Forge Cellars is a partnership between 14th generation Rhone Vigneron Louis Barrol, Chateau de Saint Combe, and industry veteran Rick Rainey. Their goal is to produce single vineyard Rieslings and Pinot Noirs and hopefully more Cabernet Franc from select sites around Seneca Lake. Now, this 2019 vintage is their inaugural vintage for Cabernet Franc. And when I was in the Finger Lakes back in July, I had a chance to sit down with Rick for a couple of hours and learn a little bit more about his philosophy as it relates to viticulture as well as winemaking. And he explained to me that Cabernet Franc was always in his peripheral vision as a grape variety he wanted to work with at Forge. He loves Loire Valley Cabernet Franc and he does see the potential for Cab Franc in the Finger Lakes. It just took him a little while to find the right site and to work with the right grower. So this is coming from the Willow Vineyard and it's a five acre or two hectare block of Cabernet Franc vines that were planted in 2016, and the vineyard is farmed by legendary grape grower John Wagner. The vineyard is located in Lodi, it's on the east side of Seneca Lake, and we're on a west-facing slope here at about 725 feet or 220 meters or so above sea level. And this west-facing slope is hugely important because we get the benefit of the stronger afternoon sunshine. In addition to that, we actually get more sunshine here on the east side of Seneca Lake, about an hour and a half more sunshine per day on the east side versus the west side. And for a grape variety like Cabernet Franc that needs uh, sort of more time on the vine as well as increased sunshine uh, for ripeness as well as minimizing the piercings, this west-facing slope is hugely important. In addition to that, the vineyard is very close to the lake. We're talking uh, less than a half a mile, like just a few hundred meters away from the lake. So there's a strong moderating influence here. And as a result, this site is a little bit on the warmer side for the Finger Lakes. So we have the benefit of the west facing slope and that extra so strong afternoon sunshine. And we have a warm site. So a variety like Cabernet Franc is super happy here. Uh, now in terms of soils in the Finger Lakes, it's the tail of two bedrocks. We have limestone and we have shale. Uh, where we are here in Lodi and at the Willow Vineyard, we're more than half way down the east side of Seneca Lake. So we are on a shale bedrock. Now, if you recall from a video I did a few weeks back featuring a Cabernet Franc from Trius Winery in Niagara on the Lake, Ontario, that was also Cabernet Franc on shale, but that's a different shale there. Uh, that is the Queenston Formation Red Shale. And the shale here in the Finger Lakes is a black calcareous shale known as Utica Shale. And this actually dates to the Middle Ordovician period. So it actually is about 20 million years older than the shale found in Niagara on the Lake in Ontario. Now, in terms of topsoil, what we're dealing with here is called glacial till, and this is the topsoil throughout the Finger Lakes, and it was formed after the last ice age. And the composition of this till can vary in terms of that proportion of sand, silt, and clay, uh, depending on where you are around the Finger Lakes. Uh, but here in, uh, in the Willow Vineyard, we have a higher percentage of sand. It's a sandy loam, uh, and that sand has good drainage. And for 2019, this was a, a vineyard, uh, vintage that was a little bit on the uh, wetter side, so that drainage was super, super helpful. Now, in the vineyard, the vines are trained using a system called Scott Henry and this training system is used widely throughout the Finger Lakes not just for Cabernet Franc but for other great varieties as well. Uh, this is a divided canopy system it's forearm cane pruned uh, and there's two fruiting zones. Now there's some key benefits with this training system. Uh, first and foremost it's preferred on sites where there is a strong potential for vigor. In addition to that it is good for uh, places where there's increased disease pressure particularly in cooler climates like the Finger Lakes. Uh, uh, in addition to that, because of this divided canopy system and the, sort of these two fruiting zones and how the canopy is managed around them, uh, there can be improved sun exposure to the bunches, which is of course great for a variety like Cabernet Franc. One caveat uh, with this uh, training system is the yields can be higher, and this uh, can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. It depends on what grape variety we're talking about. Now, from the limited conversations I've had uh, with both growers as well as industry professionals in the Finger Lakes and the dozen or so samples of Cab Franc I've tasted from the region so far, the jury is still out on whether or not this Scott Henry training system is the ideal system for Cabernet Franc in the Finger Lakes, at least as it relates to red wine production. Cabernet Franc as a variety needs its yields managed very carefully in order to ensure that there is a balance between the canopy as well as the yields. Uh, and this is important for not only ripening, but also minimizing the pyrazines. Uh, and while Cab Franc does not need its yields restricted necessarily to make a good red wine, at least not to the same degree that say Pinot Noir does, uh, there is a sweet spot when it comes to yield. And you gotta get, you gotta know the site and you kinda have to get that right every year in order for that vine balance to be achieved and for us to get good ripeness as well as minimize the pyrazines. Now in the vineyard for this wine, uh, Rick works very closely with John throughout the growing season to ensure that there is that sort of ideal balance between canopy as well as fruit. 
Uh, Rick favors judicious leaf pulling to increase sun exposure to the bunches so that we minimize those pyrazines and aid ripeness. And he also does some green harvesting as well. They're ideally shooting for sort of three to three and a half tons per acre in terms of their yield with Cabernet Franc. Now in the cellar uh, for the 2019 vintage, uh, this was 40% whole cluster and then 60% uh, destemmed fruit, and that could evolve over the course of their uh, Cabernet Franc winemaking journey. Uh, fermentation took place in sort of larger 5,000 liter wooden fermenters with indigenous yeast, and then it spent about 20 days on skins. Uh, and Rick mentioned that they do do some uh, gentle, he stressed <laughs> gentle uh, punch downs during the act of fermentation to get that right level of extraction. Uh, and then uh, Elevage took place in sort of this uh, a third to third to third strategy uh, between sort of barriques uh, and then demi moods and then these larger wooden fermenters. So let's get into the wine. Uh, immediately the nose has this really sort of fine perfume, this sort of fine delicate perfume to it. And the fruit profile does lean a little bit more black fruited but uh, more um, I would say like more tart black fruits. Uh, so things like um, like black currant, there's a little bit of black raspberry here as well. There's a lovely floral note, sort of violets, and then there's even like a little sort of sweet pomegranate thing going on which is quite nice. Uh, the pyrazines as well, they're in balance. They do lean a little bit more forward here. Um, so we are getting uh, these wonderful notes of sort of herbs. There's a little bit of cedar here. Um, maybe a touch of moss, but I like sort of the, the balance of how the darker fruit kind of plays with the, with the pyrazines. And there is even a little touch of sort of a smoky note on the nose as well. Hmm. This has really refreshing, almost brisk acidity. You can really sense that this is coming from a cooler microclimate. Uh, the tannins are very silky in the mouth. They're quite fine and they do have a certain kind of grip on the finish, uh, but that's nice. It does kind of pull everything in a little bit, which I quite like. What is particularly enjoyable about, about this wine is the middle palate experience. Well, there's a nice sense of roundness here and this could be the whole whole cluster thing coming into play. Uh, I still don't quite get or I haven't wrapped my head around uh, the impact of whole cluster as it relates to Cabernet Franc but there is this wonderful kind of juicy profile. There is texture there and there's a nice combination of this sort of a sweet pomegranate thing, a little bit of blood orange and then there's a spiciness on the mid palate that's coming through for me as a little bit of clove uh, and also a touch of black pepper. In terms of the overall mm, profile of this wine, uh, it is really, it's lean, it's refined, it's poised, and there is this sort of filigree kind of character to it. It is a bit more on the delicate side. It's really about finesse and elegance here, uh, as well as balance. Now, when I was uh, meeting with Rick, one of the words he used that really kind of struck me as interesting as it relates to the wines that he loves to drink as well as make is relief. Uh, and the best way I think of describing this to people is like a sense of ease, a sense of refreshment, uh, a sort of Moorish quality that you finish the glass and you kind of want to instantly go back for more. It doesn't tire the palate at all. Uh, and I think Rick and Louis really nailed it with their first vintage of Cabernet Franc. It does have this juiciness, it has this liveliness and this wonderful energy, and it does kind of encourage encourage you uh, to go back to the glass. Uh, I look forward to hopefully tasting more Cabernet Franc from Forge Cellars in the future. If you have a favorite Cabernet Franc from the Finger Lakes, uh, please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with another wine. Cheers.